I also want to touch on male circumcision, Mr. Bailey. Male genital mutilation. According to a barrister's opinion, carrying out circumcision on males where there is no medical need, non-therapeutic circumcision, is a crime under the Offences Against the Person Act 1861, being at least actual bodily harm, if not grievous bodily harm. In 1983, Lord Hailsham, the then Lord Chancellor, said of female genital mutilation, in the case of a minor under the age of 18, there is no possibility that consent is any defence at all. A minor under the age of 16 is not able to consent to the commission upon her of a criminal assault. Neither parental consent nor the consent of the minor would be any defence at all. And if the parents did such a thing or instigated such a thing or participated in such a thing, it would only render them liable to criminal penalties too. When I put it to the government in 2016 that female genital mutilation was already illegal before specific laws were introduced on the subject, they agreed that it was. When I then put the position regarding boys to them, they took a different line. They quoted Sir James Mumby as the president of the family division of the High Court in a case in January 2015 as saying, whereas it can never be reasonable parenting to inflict any form of FGM on a child, the position is quite different with male circumcision. Society and the law, including family law, are prepared to tolerate non-therapeutic male circumcision performed for religious or even for purely cultural or conventional reasons, while no longer being willing to tolerate FGM in any of its forms. As the former barrister I mentioned earlier also said, it would require a parliamentary override for male circumcision to be legal, and that has never existed. No exemptions to the law of the land are permissible for religious or cultural reasons. The Ministry of Justice went on to say that there was no doubt that female genital mutilation could have a physical and psychological impact on women. They also said that some girls die as a result of the procedure. Absolutely right. Two, Mr Bailey. I don't pretend to be an expert in this field, but I do believe that boys have been reported to have died too following a circumcision, and I have also seen accounts of the physical and psychological impact on men. I understand that the position of the NHS is that the risks associated with routine circumcision, such as infection and excessive bleeding, outweigh any potential benefits. I am mentioning all of this as I think it is, it is something that should be on the record, not least because of the very different approach to male and female genital mutilation. The government said back in 2016 that they had no current plans to change the law in relation to male circumcision. Given everything I've said, there may be no need to change the law at all to bring about a change in male circumcisions. Uh, but I'll be particularly interested to hear from the Minister on this point. Interest, with uh, great interest. And um, he um, mentioned the very, very complex issues of um, female genital mutilation and uh, male circumcision. Um, I, I, I very much understand um, why he's, risen it, uh, he's raised it. Sorry, um, I, There is... I mean, female genital mutilation is illegal, um, uh, and it does... The, the, the range of ways in which a little girl can be mutilated are, frankly, horrific. Um, but I take the point he has raised about uh, male circumcision, and if I may, I'm going to uh, consider it and, and write to him on that, um, because I, I wouldn't wish to um, address such, a t such an important matter on the fly. And I'm going to finish, uh, Mr Bailey, by saying that uh, my humble friend for Shipley concluded his speech by wishing that we could all live together equally in happiness, and I think we can all agree with that. Yeah. Can't you see it too? There's an elephant in the room.